Hello, my name is Faisal Khan. I'm a banking and a payment consultant. I will admit, I'm not an economist. I've read a lot of books on economics. I've read a lot of books on, about the economy. I've read a lot of books about how money is created, how capitalism is good for our society, how money is basically originated as debt, etc., etc. But I feel in this day and age, especially now, where we can take a pause and look at things, it is safe to say that capitalism has failed us. Now, before you get all antsy and uptight, listen to me. Just my opinion, you don't have to agree to it. But very recently, a picture came up and it'll come on the screen shortly. And this picture shows the sentiment of the society. A stock market, by the way, is the market sentiment of the people, the investors, investors, people who put money in, people like you and I, people who look at putting their capital and getting a return. And you see the stock market had really a great, great uprising in the same week where more than 10 million people lost their jobs. If that does not signify a disconnect between the market segments and their on-ground reality, then what does, I don't know. A lot of people have said, well, this picture is taken out of context. Is it? Really? I mean, the stock market is the sentiment of the people, of the society in general. Yes, it includes investors, but of the society in general. And yet you will see that all this is leading to a very big inequality. Uh, if you look at, you know, famous economists like Robert Reich, you like Paul Krugman, uh, Krugman or Joseph Stiglitz and many others, you will see that they keep saying again and again, inequality, inequality, inequality. Inequality is just, it's growing and it's growing so much that you can clearly see corporations care more so about their profits, their share price than about benefits to you or jobs to you. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost hilarious that when governments do bailouts of these corporations, they buy their own shares back. So I looked up the definition of capitalism and it says as follows, and I'm going to read it. An economic and political system in which a country's trade and industry are controlled by private owners for the profit rather than by the state. And, you know, we say, oh, the state should not involve. And yet at the very same time, they keep running back to the state for bailouts. They keep running back to the state, oh, save the, you know, save the airline, save the hotel industry, save the insurance, save the bank. Because otherwise, if we go down, everyone goes down. And what do they do with the bailout money? They buy their own shares back. They don't provide the relief to the, to the end masses. You know that, that famous thing, which is a huge, huge uh, lie, the trickle down effect, it never happens. That's why the inequality is there. I think it's, if you spend a little time reading, if you spend a little time rather than arguing with someone like me, and I, like I said, I'm a nobody in this field, rather than arguing, and I used to do the same, rather than arguing with someone, someone once told me, why don't you go and read up on yourself? Why don't you go and discover yourself? I won't even tell you where to go. Go and question your beliefs. Go and question the, you know, the so-called beliefs that are etched in stone. Go and question the economic system you're working in and then see where are we going. We are going into debt further and further. I asked a question on Quora about, I think, so seven or eight years ago, you know, what would happen if some, all the debt in the world was forgiven? And I got a lot of flack from it. Oh, this will happen, that will happen, it can't be done, this can't be done, you know, what a stupid question, etc. Turns out, forgiving debt is a normal part of business. It's a normal part of thing. Debt was self-manifested. If we can create it, we can eliminate it. Uh, likewise, you know, all this quantitative easing where money is just like this being introduced into society. What happens when you need to take it away? How do you take it away? Go and learn these things. The where we are heading is we need to question where capitalism is heading and where the common person, you and I may have money to survive the next month, the next six months, and if you're very fortunate, the year, two years, or 10 years from now, most people don't. They live paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. If a medical emergency came in, in the United States, most people cannot even afford $400. And guess what? That's the United States. In the rest of the world, it's equally bad. It's not like people have lots of money saved up. I asked my friends, my personal friends, if you didn't have medical insurance and a hospital bill came up, how long would you survive if you had to pay $1,000 a day? 
Turns out the average answer was eight days. Eight. Eight days is what they could pay for and after that they are out of money. $8,000 is the maximum that most of my friends have saved up for any medical emergency and so forth. They may have other assets but they might take time to liquidate and not many, you know, not everyone is well off. People are struggling. So I think it's very important that you start reading. The reason I'm making this video is not to tell you about this graph or that, you know, capitalism. Read. Get yourself better informed. The more you are informed, uh, the more better choices you will make, not from an economic point of view, but also from your business point of view, uh, communal point of view, the longevity part of you, you know, and I say longevity part, I mean, you know, you know your family, your friends, the decisions you make on, uh, you know, uh, uh, on those fronts. We really need to re uh, stop, reflect, look, relook at what we are doing from an economic point of view. Anyways, this is just a little sounding I wanted to do. I hope you uh, take it to heart and I hope you do go and read. There's a lot of information being offered on YouTube. There's a tremendous amount of information being offered on Instagram. If you follow Robert Reek, his lectures are on Instagram and on YouTube. I highly, highly recommend it. So is Joseph Stiglitz, so is Paul Krugman and many other economists. Some of them are so unknown but they put out fantastic works and everything is out on YouTube. People may not like reading everything or you know they may not have subscription to The Economist or the other magazines or the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal but certainly you can go to YouTube and you can read up on that. Anyways as always if you have a question or a comment there's a contact form in the description below. Please fill it out. Till next time this is Faisal Khan signing off.